Hey, everyone. Hello. Hey, hi, everyone. Hey, how's everyone doing today? Hey. <laughs> we're good. We're good. Doing good. Awesome. Well, um, great to have everyone here today. Uh, I'm going to allow everyone to give an introduction on themselves. We'll be covering today the future of the open metaverse and interoperability. Uh, of course, we are all here part of the uh, Open Metaverse Alliance Alma 3. Um, and I'll let you guys kick it off with a quick intro. I'm Badis Samadian. I'm one of the co-founders and vice chair of OMA3. And in my day job, I'm the CEO of a company called Space, which is a commerce virtual world. Okay, I'll jump in. I'm Robbie. Uh, I'm the CEO of Animoca Brands, uh, also a uh, part-time OMA3 director and co-founder, I guess, like, like these fun gentlemen here. Um, and uh, we are a games company, um, so we build games and metaverses, uh, and we're also a very active investor in Web3. You want to go first, Dirk? Go ahead. Uh, okay, I'm Ricardo. I'm a CPO at My Neighbor Alice. Uh, our mission is to create uh, the first uh, fully decentralized game. So we want to create a game that doesn't have any server, essentially, and is completely governed by the users. All right, and hi, everyone. I don't know if we were there half an hour ago because I just presented Upland, so I don't want to go through that whole thing again, but I'm co-founder and co-CEO of Upland. And um, yeah, we came together actually at the end, but this one was, was at the end of 21, I think, right? Yeah. We, yeah. Right? We had, uh, yeah. So at the end of 21, you know, we were, I think it was one of the big conferences, right? NFT NYC. And yeah. we said, uh, you know, everyone's working on this thing and, and so on. And, you know, we're all big believers in Web3 and, you know, in the, in the open metaverse. But what does it actually mean, right? We said, okay, you know, if we don't start working together, right we're never gonna get there right and change really this paradigm and that's uh, how it all got started right it was basically november 21 and um i think then we met for the first time right in person right yeah exactly in the hotel lobby in june, of the june 22 and we get started but uh, hand, over, hand over back to you Great. Um, so uh, I guess I'll cover quickly that uh, we're, we're here as uh, the Open Metaverse Alliance. Uh, our goal is to, for Web3, uh, become really the foundational consortium for the top metaverse and infrastructure companies in Web3. We're an association headquartered in Zug. And our mission is really to empower the interoperable and user-owned metaverse. Uh, we, we really strive to contribute to a more inclusive, innovative, and creative uh, connected environment. We believe that tomorrow's internet should be owned by the users and our core principles are focused around interoperability, standardization, and user ownership. We fundamentally believe in decentralization, inclusive participation, transparent governance, and fair utility. And today really what I want to do is kind of expand on this and, and why is it that we really believe in, in this, uh, this type of user-owned future and what does it mean in context for uh, the metaverse, the spatial internet, and, and where we're all seeing this go. Um, I'll, I'll start off with Ricardo. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, yes, as you said, the goal is to be interoperable and uh, to have uh, the user owning the metaverse. And I think that also, like uh, Dirk was saying, a lot of uh, uh, us were, was working in this direction. And uh, if uh, we, I think that many of these uh, uh, products are being developed by independent uh, projects. And ultimately, this is going to be a lot of work that is done. And then one solution that maybe is not even optimal being kind of the de facto final <clears throat> standard. So I think it's great that uh, we have the possibility and, uh, and the will that is actually something that is very, very Web3 to sit together and trying to work what is the things that user wants, essentially. Yeah, and I think actually to follow on from what Ricardo was saying, I think it's very much also the philosophy of Web3 of why we wanted to do this. The idea being that we wanted to have community-led um, you know, solutions to problems and figure out how we can build these from the ground up. And, and frankly, the most straightforward way is we all are building different metaverses of our own that we're working on separately. And, and so how do we get our own stuff to work with each other first? And maybe in doing so, we can kind of pave the way uh, and provide some learnings that we can then share with everybody else. 
So, so with that, I think you've touched, and I'll bring this to Dirk now. We've we've touched on the fact that the idea of the open metaverse is its user ownership and being community run. Dirk, from all these conversations we've had as a board with things that we're collectively doing with the working groups, uh, you know, what is it exactly that you're seeing uh, about the user owned control and, and, and porting of these digital assets that's going to be wildly uh, innovative for a, a new type of internet experience? Yeah, I think the biggest challenge we have is, of course, that, you know, all the worlds, when you think about it, right, they build differently, they look differently, right? When you think about your world space, right, we have an Animoca, we have Sandbox, we have Upland, and we have Ricardo. <laughs> so that's the, the thing is, right, you know, that's that's the first challenge which we have, right? So that's, they look different. So how can how can we make it easy for users then, first of all, because when we say that the user is at the center of everything, this is the true paradigm shift we're doing. We're moving away from being platform controlled, right, being user controlled, right? What does it mean when the user goes from one world to the other, right? So eventually the user maybe wants to stay the same at the end of the day, right? But he wants to take his identity with him, maybe assets he won, he bought or something right in a, in a particular world you want to reuse that right but what does it mean when you take a car from one world to the other i mean in the real world you know you when you go from france to germany you don't stop at the border and just buy a new car and continue to drive right you continue driving with your same car and that's exactly how it should work also in the metaverse in the ideal version and that's where why we said okay we have to uh, come up with a certain solutions and that's why we created an upland um, excuse, oops, we created Alma 3 we created um uh, different work groups, um, right, uh, which are focusing on things. And, and that's where we actually have invited lots of our members. I think, uh, I don't know if we're going to have a slide of all the members we currently have right now. But um, so we, what we do is actually uh, we create those work groups um, uh, for particular topics. And of course, members can always suggest new topics if they want to work on some. But of course, then you have to contribute also, right? That's important, not just suggesting then moving away. You have to say, okay, how can we get this together? And of course, you have then to excite others to work on that. And currently, we have actually uh, four, four work groups, right? We have one that's called the Interworld Portals, right? Where basically, in, uh, we're going to talk about it in more detail, where users can jump right from um, one world to the other, right? Um, you know, using a protocol for, for portaling. So that's the first thing. We have uh, the interworld uh, asset transfers, right? So where we can transfer avatars, you know, exactly what I just said, right? From one world to the other, then, um, um, you know, land domain names, we're working on that one, right? For, for you know, domain names for metaverse land and then NFTs, you know, to ensure, you know, creator royalties, uh, how are they getting paid? We also have some some other work groups, you know, like um, <clears throat> also ecosystem work groups, right? We want to expand further because obviously, even though OMA3 is some kind of a standards, um, you know, consortium where we're coming together, but there's all the other standard consortiums out there we want to uh, collaborate with. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so just to kind of like close that loop. So on user ownership and what you mentioned about asset transfer, I think, you know, you, you're all representing worlds that are deeply um, uh, passionate about making this possible, allowing you to take these assets across worlds. And I guess, Ricardo, it would be really great if you could share like some examples of things that you see having true value, maybe in the form of like, you know, XP levels you carry over, uh, you know, saved things, history behind assets. Uh, this would be really helpful, I think, for the people to understand why this is so valuable that you can bring assets over. Yeah, so one thing that we have to identify in this working group are what are the information that we need to share between one world and the other. So the example that Dirk was making is uh, if I drive a car between uh, France and Germany, nobody stops me, I can just go straight. But this is because uh, there is an alignment between uh, the European Union, for example, on what is a car, what, what are the safety measures that a car needs to have, uh, and so forth. And uh, this is what we have to do. We have to make sure that we identify what are the part of information we want to bring from one world to the other, what are the rules of these parameters. And then uh, once we have this uh, standard, uh, it's just about having everybody aligned exactly how it works, uh, the same way that it works in the real world, right? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, ultimately, I would say that, uh, I mean, I guess that we are all here because we work with blockchain and blockchain is a decentralized database. Uh, 
the informations are distributed and then it's up to us to decide what of, what of this information needs to go between one metaverse and the other. So I, I think that is really uh, something that, uh, I mean, I guess everybody agrees that this is something that will come in the future, which we are just here to facilitate this actually. Great. I don't know if yeah. Robin wants to add something, it was nothing a lot. No, no, I think I, I think it's very, very well said. Well, because I think it's it's again about this spirit of collaboration and about trying to find these solutions where like in, in the web three spirit of things, they're reciprocal solutions. So it's about figuring out how we can share and share access to each other's metaverses for mutual benefit. Absolutely. So um, I, I, I lead one of the working groups, uh, which is the interworld portaling system, which basically considers uh, portaling and mapping and land domains um, inside of a working group. Ricardo is part of that working group. And we also have a uh, sub experimental group um, within that that's actually working on a protocol for enabling people to uh, portal uh, between virtual worlds, both uh, uh, application-based as well as web-based, and we're trying to basically create a solution that also maps all of the content across these worlds. So we've, uh, this group's been around for about a year now, and what we've been able to do within this is we've, we've created quite a lot of uh, extensive documentation about you know, how should such a system work if we were to standardize such a system, um, how would we go about it? What are the things that should exist? What things should shall exist? And what things uh, are kind of like open for further discussion? Uh, we've actually publicly released that as well in, in GitHub as a requirements document uh, and, and basically position paper for uh, what we believe this future is going to look like. And there are a few people that are part of the uh, experimental group. Uh, the experimental group are essentially engineers within our working group who are coming together to potentially create a way to, uh, in an elegant version zero, find a way to combine basically a messaging layer with a mapping layer, with a portaling layer, and propose it as basically a secure version zero protocol um, to then get you know external feedback on. Uh, we've already had one coding jam behind this. Uh, there's a second one coming up. Uh, later next month. Uh, so we're very excited to share those updates. Um, also, just to tell you a bit about the process uh, before we get into liaisons we have and opportunities. Uh, the OMA3 process uh, acts as a consortium. So uh, we consider use cases, uh, we look at threats, we look at requirements, specifications, um, and then we get in these experimental groups into the code infrastructure and potentially from there creating a certification program. I think one more thing that uh, everyone here agrees with is that, you know, for us, this vision of tomorrow of, of privacy and user owned information is so, uh, so dear to us that we really want to create some sort of certification program to make sure that uh, companies in the future act responsible and, and act according to uh, this type of certification that we want to publish. Um, yeah, maybe Dirk, you have one or two things more to say about uh, basically our passion around uh, certifying and making sure that companies are responsible and then we can hop into the liaisons and members we already have. Yeah, when you think about the process and I don't know if you listened to my talk before, but I think what is what is important is you cannot go and say, hey, top down, you know, now you have those four guys coming up <laughs> with a solution and, you know, everyone has to, to follow that. It, we will strongly believe in the bottom up and bottom up also means that sometimes some companies have thought about certain things already and they can bring that in and maybe what they have developed becomes a standard. I mean, now you say, oh, that's one company who has to develop it. But actually, if others agree that this was a good idea or is a good idea, then it's something what we want to bring forward. So actually, for you as a company, it's, it's a big opportunity that you can actually leverage what you already have developed, right? So it can be something, you know, some kind of file formats, right? It can be something, you know, how what uh, Batiste just explained, how, you know, the protocol looks like, um, you know, so that, that's something because... It, because at the end of the day, we are not, let's say, professional uh, standard organizations managers who do nothing but uh, sitting in this committee because we're all running companies on the side and we have to rely on work which already has been done somewhere else. Of course, we always pay attention, right, that not 
one 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 thing is becoming too big if there are two or three alternatives you always want to offer alternatives to the you know potential other operators where they can choose from um, and but sometimes you know we have to merge those alternatives also together but uh, clearly it's it's what we encourage everyone to join right because obviously uh, they can actually influence how the future of the open metaverse is going to look like I I could also maybe add to that that um, it's not as boring as it might sound. <laughs> Us sitting around talking about like it's not like making ISO standards or something like that. Um, I think you know this as an organization, it is a grassroots uh, endeavor, and as Dirk said, you know we're not massive corporates that just assign engineer number six seventy two to come and sit on a committee somewhere. Um, this is you know when you join OMA three and you come and participate in a working group group you literally work with badis on the you know portaling and mapping group you you work with literally the founders of all of these different companies so i would encourage people who are also considering membership to to think of this as an opportunity to get to work with some of the leading founders in the space hands on you know on these issues because i think that's quite exciting to be a part of of really you know coming up with how the metaverse evolves yeah, if I can make one last call to action on top of all of this. Um, it actually, our industry, our crypto industry is based on improvement proposals. Ethereum, Bitcoin, they all works on collaboration of technical people, very, very committed that, that comes together and makes something uh, better for the whole community. And this also is a nice part of the crypto world that everything at the end is one code with his hand that handles everything. So this is really what we are doing. And uh, as uh, Robbie was saying, uh, I think there are great people that are working here. We actually uh, announced uh, new partners. I don't know about this if you want to introduce later. So I think that uh, is really on, on the right track. Yeah, definitely. So we, we already have a large growing number of uh, uh, members a part of us. We have a long wait list. Uh, we've got Alien World, Sandbox, Super World, Decentraland. Uh, Animoca, a planned, of course, uh, Meta Metaverse, Dapper Labs, Unstoppable Domains, Meta Juice, Another World, Near Protocol. Um, pretty much everyone uh, who is really committed towards seeing the open metaverse come to life is, is part of us. Uh, we have started uh, also some liaison agreements, uh, for example, with the Metaverse Standard Forum. We actually share some overlapping working group conversations and share notes. Uh, we are doing that as well with the Open Geospatial Consortium, uh, and there's a couple more in the pipeline. Um, you know, if you are working for another work, uh, working group or consortium or something, we would love to set up a liaison together. Um, there are quite a lot of things that require a lot of energy and, and, and a lot of uh, uh, work from people. So we would love to uh, bring, bring people together and, and basically get more uh, liaisons happening. Um, Let's talk a bit about the new opportunities, which I will kind of use as a way to segue uh, into the state of the metaverse, which is really important for us to cover, I think, for this audience. So uh, what are, from your guys' opinions and what you've been seeing recently, I know Dirk is working on something exciting for uh, animal standards. What are some new opportunities that we are seeing that are relevant to the open metaverse? Dirk can go first, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So with all the companies you mentioned, of course, my neighbor Alice is in there as well. <laughs> so and, and yeah, of course. Uh, and yesterday, for instance, also uh, Yuga Labs joined, right? Which is also right with uh, everyone knows our side more apes. So every you see, you know, everyone you probably hear about, especially in the Web three space, right there. Um, they are part of of uh, OMA three as well, yeah. And um, to the uh, to the liaisons agreements, so the MSF is a very other big uh, group which has come together. Um, you know, where, where the typical Web two uh, companies are in there, right? So that's uh, and we are part of that. So we are part of some of those groups. So because obviously we don't want to overlap also with you know and do the same things over again, right? So we see that we can work with those groups to bring uh, new new stuff into into OMA three as well so for us the opportunities are you know it's 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 a lot of things so and i think someone just mentioned from today here is you know especially when it comes to certification right of uh, certain things we know that in the web3 space 
um, you know, there's a lot, unfortunately, also sometimes there's a lot of, you know, not trustful things going on sometimes. And, um, and uh, that's actually obviously something we want to avoid. And we are currently thinking through, can we develop some kind of certification standards, which would make it then possible uh, for users to know, oh, this has been certified by a trustful organization, right? And a trustworthy organization, sorry. And, um, you know, then I can also do and and maybe download this app and, and so on or, and, and sign up here. And I'm sure my 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 private keys are not getting stolen or whatever. Right. So so I mean, these things is um, something I think where one of the biggest opportunities is which we have is really to bring also the industry forward by leave it up then to the others to add more things. <clears throat> I can uh, do a bit more. I mean, I, but you know that uh, I work with you on the interwork portaling system, but there are many others that I think they're very uh, interesting for the industry, like the NFT royalties. It's a hot topic in the last month. And I think uh, having a, a working group to understand every party's interest, interest from the part of the users, from the part of the project, from the part of the marketplace, of course, and uh, and all the different sides, sides, I think is very important. For example, this is a very good example for me, in my opinion, on how Omatry can help uh, putting all the people that have different uh, interests in one topic uh, and then work on a solution. Um, yeah, this is, a, I think it's a, it's something uh, that, that, that uh, we have the role to, to, to facilitate actually. Yeah, definitely. Um, so let's use this to jump into the state of the metaverse, right? Um, I think this is something you'll, you'll see us probably release some, uh, document on maybe later this year as well, but the state of the metaverse right now, what, what are the open issues to bringing to life the metaverse. And maybe I'll, I'll start this off to kind of like set a tone, but really I'd like to go into like adoption issues, user issues, tech that is needed to help solve for this. Uh, I know Ricardo is helping a lot with bringing this to life. What is, what is inevitable still to all of us here today? What are we still fighting for? And how do we look at uh, its definition uh, in its current uh, in a future state? Um, so, Working with Ricardo, for example, in the inter-world uh, portaling system, we know that one of the fundamental things is that uh, this, this spatial web experience where you can go between many different worlds of different content is not here, de is, is not here yet. And so um, fundamentally, we believe this deep infrastructure is needed to give birth to this spatial internet experience so that I can go from a My Neighbor Alice experience to a a planned experience to a sandbox experience to a space experience. And some people that are, you know, uh, reputable right now in the metaverse world, they are doing these things that are pub crawls, which are basically like some forms of trying to basically show that this is where things are headed. Um, but we fundamentally believe that this deep infrastructure is it's really like the pressing matter that needs to be so, uh, solved for to, to really bring back um, or, uh, or, or to bring to life really this metaverse that we have all been uh, uh, professing to exist. Uh, so I'll let you guys take it from there. Yeah, so I think one one thing we all know is the state of the metaverse, right? Of course, let's let's be very honest here, right? The metaverse was very hyped, especially when um, Meta or Facebook announced, you know, their plans back late in twenty one, and we had all the NFT hype and everything. But it's like always with technology, things get hyped and sometimes overhyped, and then you know people wake up and say, well. That's you know maybe expectations were all already very very high and you know then you know then you have to call 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 up with these expectations. It's sometimes difficult. And uh, but I think right now what you see is people are building and what the, the most importantly in terms of uh, the metaverse is you know that actually people enjoy what they can do there. It's not just you know for for pure speculation or something. They can actually do something. They can you know create value and then exchange the value also. That is also what is so special about Web3 metaverses, because we're talking about true ownership. And when you truly own something, you can you know, sell it, you can transfer the value, what makes it new. And this, this, this 
that alone that people own something is will create a lot of new things people will become super creative to do all that and we'll we will see that and that's where we want to set the foundation but we have a long we have also some way to go still we as we all know that blockchain can be complicated you know with private keys and passphrases and so on, which is not really suited for mass market. So that has to become easier. And we hope as Omar Free also that we can contribute certain things here in that aspect, right? We have to make it so the sign up process by itself, right? We have to look into to payment methods. That doesn't mean that we're going to offer any payment methods or so, but, you know, we have to look at this. Uh, is there something, you know, in the future, which could be uh, part of, you know, some kind of standardization, which helps uh, use us to just to to pay just simpler or to extract also some monetary value yeah. so these are the things uh, you know in, in at the end of the day uh, is you know intellectual property um, you know transferring of value making it easier to use i think these are the things which we are working on and i think we made really big steps forward especially in the last few months here I think um, maybe just to chime in here, um, obviously I've, I've been asked to speak at a couple of events where the, the theme was, isn't the metaverse dead? <laughs> so, so, so my job was to, to kind of prove that it's not. Um, I, I, think, I think again, you know, like we've talked about in the past, a lot of that um, comes down to definitions. Um, and I think maybe I, I, I can give an example, at least from our portfolio um, recently, uh, which is something that I think touches on the idea of metaverse interoperability in a very, um, you know, very simple and straightforward Web3 way, which is we launched a game uh, called Rec League uh, a couple of weeks ago. And this is a PvP fighting game. And it's, a you know, for people who play games, it'll be a very familiar gameplay style. Um, and uh, it was the culmination of a couple of years of work, and we're really pre pleased with it. And it's based upon IP from the Board Ape Yacht Club uh, ecosystem from the other side. Um, and so what we did was we worked with Yuga because we're using their IP for the environments. Um, but the actual gameplay involves Board Ape Yacht Club holders being able to bring their NFTs to get special perks and privileges and to be able to mint special robots and parts and things like that when they come to the game. And so this is, you know, what I would call a kind of entry level interoperability, if you will, because we're essentially using the board Ape PFPs as access tokens to recognize VIP customers when they come to our experience. Um, but I, I do think it's important to remind people that these, albeit simple examples, are the building blocks of how we build interoperability in the metaverse. Um, and they're live today. Very cool. So uh, Robbie, if it's okay, I, I'd like to uh, just prompt a question from you. you. You represent quite a lot of portfolio companies. Um, user issues with adoption. So I think something we've all been speaking about and I've seen you talk about is that uh, mm -hmm. it's the experiences that are really going to propel the metaverse back into uh, conversations. What are you seeing? What are you advising on user issues and helping people break that chasm? So I think the thing that excites me most is, you know, I, I spend a lot of time with my investor hat on um, in my job. So I meet a lot of startups and a lot of companies. And I've noticed a big trend in the last 12 months of companies coming to pitch us for like Series A, Series B rounds. So not, you know, startups, but maturing businesses who are building integrated Web3 tech stacks. So they're essentially trying to build APIs and, and SDKs and stuff for developers to create experiences where all the Web3 rails are essentially turnkey-ish, you know, uh, with differing degrees of success. Um, but the idea is to really help developers who are not blockchain savvy to be able to put in wallets and custody solutions and help them with smart contracts and minting and all this stuff that, you know, we've all had to learn for ourselves in, in Web3 in the past. And I think that this is going to be a key vector for um, adoption by other developers, which is the most important part, because what we want is we want Web3 to be more developer friendly. And that way we can broaden the the sort of user acquisition funnel to other developers who want to make cool stuff. Um, and And I think that's where I also need to plug AI because although it's not being 
heavily used, at least not publicly, that we know of at the moment. Um, I think actually AI solutions are going to um, accelerate a lot of this process of figuring out how to connect some of the dots here, um, because we have um, we have studios working on AI for code generation or smart contract auditing and stuff like that. Great. I like that you brought that up. Uh, my perspective actually on, on that AI element is that I think where it's going to be a massive accelerator is that, so one of the big, I think one of the big things and common things I, I always see in the news is that like, you know, there, there's kind of like a lack of interactivity or kind of like to experience the impossible to some virtual world experiences. And, and, and the element of being able to, as a builder, mm -hmm. actually provide the, uh, provide that interactive experience easily. It's quite a difficult problem, right? If we, if we look back a year ago, the big money makers of our market were the, the agencies that were making 3D rooms, right? Uh, but, you know, I think kind of like the joke of that example is like, it's just a beautiful Apple store in 3D. Um, there was a lack of interactivity in the room, but if you're able to generate objects, if you're able to, you know, prompt and plug in certain games like darts, poker, et cetera, we, we kind of like get faster there to what, what an interactive experience really should be. Ricardo, you want to add something to that? Yeah, I mean, I guess that the same with AI with blockchain. It's uh, really that that people see the possibilities, and then there is a lot of hype. And uh, simply, what we are doing now is building. And what does it mean building? It means two things: either we need the tooling, like uh, Robbie was saying, that we need these um, these tools for the developers, or we need something for the user, which is what you were bringing up. So we need a better pro uh, productification. We need to create products around it, essentially. Once we have something that is easy to use for developers, and once we have something that is easy to use for the users, I think then uh, then it's kind of done. It's a it's a path, uh, and OMA3 can help in this. Uh, and, um, and it's just about time. But, you know, I think that all the solutions that we talk, all the solutions that we think are needed in the industry, they're actually possible. They just need to be built, and that's what... Uh, what but uh, everything is doing now. Absolutely. Uh, Dirk, you have written uh, one or two books now about uh, the metaverse and, and made kind of a lot of predictions yourself about these limitless possibilities that are coming. What is it if you were to write a blog article today that you would say is still very inevitable uh, that we are too early about that is kind of missing in the tech elements to, to really... Uh, help us be there. Uh, I think it's it's the uh, that we can actually democratize more that everyone can participate also in the creation process. So AI is a big big support of that because today when you want to create, when you think about metaverse, you know they are normally three D worlds, right? I mean they don't have to be. People can also immerse you know differently in in, in it right but but you know, if you think about it so you need today have knowledge around unity or unreal i want to not point out any particular technologies or even photoshop blender and so on not everyone can do that and i think now with ai coming around now people can use voice right saying hey and i see that and that's where i'm hopeful right that people say i want to become a creator also i want to create digital asset draw me a car with five wheels, <laughs> I don't know, or something like this, or, right? Or, or, or make make me a room, right? An office space, yeah? And this will now, because when you always look at those typical platforms, right? You have maybe, I don't know, I don't have the exact numbers, but YouTube is maybe, probably you have 0 0.1 creators or 0, 0, 1 point very little creators, right? And lots of people are consuming, but many more people would like to consume. It's not that that easy, right? But now with AI, it becomes, things can become more easy and it's more, and then, then you get also more engagement and, and so on. So that's something I'm really, really looking forward to. Fantastic. Great. So um, we're bringing this panel to a close. Uh, we'd love to have any of you watching join us at OMA3. Uh, you'll have access to our community. Uh, you'll be able to join our Slack channel. Um, there's lots of privileges for joining us other than promotion and recognition, of course. You can help build the infrastructure. You can be the reason why we're able to bring the Web3 Metaverse vision to life. And you'll be able to influence standard creations and even be part of experimental groups. Uh, I think we, be, we all believe here that together we can realize our shared vision. 
Um, so, so please join us on alma3.org, sign up, uh, and we would love to have you guys join us. Um, great, this was awesome. Thanks for showing up. www.alma3.org. <laughs> Fantastic. Thanks, guys. Great to All chat right. with you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you.